on lack of leadership. We don't have a food shortage problem. We have a leadership problem. We have plenty of food. It's being plowed under. You've got, you're euthanizing cattle and pigs. They're out there making sure that they're pouring thousands of gallons of milk under the ground. It's not a food shortage, it's a lack of leadership. I'd harness the restaurant industry to help get food to those who need it and help get millions of laid off workers back to work and the job. That, that's what the chef's doing. And this is not rocket science, it's leadership. Lack of leadership, Kristen. Exactly. I mean, Joe Biden should be ashamed with how he's handling our economy. Inflation has hit a 30-year high. Nearly everything, including cars, food, appliances, furniture, is way up in price. Prices are also surging on heating oil and natural gas, to the point where the government is telling Americans they can expect to see their heating bills jump as much as 54% this winter. And then at the same time, we're dealing with those labor shortages and supply chain issues that you mentioned earlier. So as Christmas comes along, people are going to be seeing more bare shelves. And if people respond to that by panic buying, it will all become worse. And this is all not the result of COVID. This is the result of the federal government taking action using COVID as, as an excuse. It's the reckless spending, the out-of-control money printing, and policies that incentivize people not to work. And now we have President Biden pushing to spend another $3.5 trillion. That will just further push us toward a full-blown recession. And okay. when that day comes, it's going to be very dark. So you make so many good points there. Because when I hear that soundbite from Jason Furman talking to Bill Hemmer, and he's saying, it's the spending, stupid. That's what's driving the prices up. Um, no, Jason, it's not. It's the government spending. It's not consumer spending, okay? It's not that people are getting out there and trying to revive the economy. It's the government spending. It's the printing of money. It's the fact that we have supply chain problems. It's the fact that we have a labor shortage. Congressman, what do you tell your constituents? Uh, that the world's gone crazy and that, like a lot of things, that this administration just doesn't make any sense. And let's use the quote you just talked about. If he thinks the problem is that people are spending too much money, does he therefore want consumers to quit spending? And he thinks that's the answer to this problem? It's clearly, as has been indicated already by both of you, it's the debt, it's the spending, it's the government spending, it's the Federal Reserve. But, but I got to go back to this quote by the White House Chief of Staff, because I just think it's so remarkable. Look, if you're making a million dollars a year and you're worried about the price of your Tesla going up, that's one problem. And they can say, well, that's not a big deal. But if you're a working family, if you're like my children, young families just starting out, if you're an inner city single mom who's already dealing with chaos around her, the price of milk goes to $6 a gallon, that's a big problem to you. Yeah. Gasoline goes for four dollars or five dollars a gallon. That's a big deal, and it's a big deal if it's going to cost you, as, as Kristen said, fifty-four percent more to heat your home. And it's just so tone deaf yeah. for this administration to pretend that well, the problem is people are spending too much money, and it's sure going to impact the rich people. Well, isn't that sad? Oh my gosh, could they have come up with a worse message for this than that? I, I think tone deaf really is the perfect phrase to describe it. Kristen, we had sound bites last night from people filling up at the gas station, and we are not talking about the millionaire in the Tesla or Jeff Bezos, who isn't going to realize if he paid $60 a tank or $100 a tank or whatever it is. Real people saying, I couldn't fill my tank up today because I didn't have enough money to do it. Right. It's really sad what's happening, and unfortunately, it will probably get worse. Uh, we haven't had hyperinflation in this country since the 1970s under Jimmy Carter. Uh, for people who lived through that time, it's kind of a distant memory at this point. For those who didn't, all these discussions about inflation have kind of been academic up until now. But when hyperinflation sets in, it will be it'll be very bad, especially for the poor, the middle class, and people who are on a fixed income, because these folks will see their savings diminished by hyperinflation, but they still have to put gas in their cars. These people yeah. still have to go to the grocery stores and buy food for their families. So it's always the, the poor, the middle class, and those people on fixed incomes that get hurt most by, by this inflation. Yeah economics as well, because we're seeing the cost of goods soar right now, and wages are not going up. So people are feeling the pinch here. I mean, they're, they're moving up a little bit, but not in lockstep with the inflation that we're feeling. And that's when people start to notice it, because the money doesn't stick to their bones. Yeah, and you know, some Democrats aren't so foolish as to believe this nonsense, including Warren Summers, who has been really one of the leading Democratic economic thinkers, who has been warning us and warning the Fed for months now. And, and saying, look, the Fed policy and this additional spending, and by the way, people say it's $3.5 trillion. It's really not. It's really on the order of $5.4 trillion on the reconciliation package, mm -hmm. in addition to the $1.2 trillion on, this, on the uh, other infrastructure bill, in addition to an additional $2.3 trillion that they just expect to spend on the normal federal budget, in addition to trillions and trillions that they've spent already on COVID relief. Right. It adds up to between 16 and $18 trillion. And I'll point out, we were seeing the light at the end of the tunnel when we spent more on COVID relief, essentially, that, that we really didn't need. And that's really what started the labor shortage, because everybody said, I'm going to take the summer off. I've got these benefits. I don't need to go to work. And, and it's hard to get those people back to fill the 11 million jobs out there. Thank you both so much for coming on tonight.